Well, thank you for staying with us. January is National Glaucoma Awareness Month, providing an opportunity to educate a community about the disease. Glaucoma is one of the leading causes of blindness in the United States, and according to the Glaucoma Research Foundation, glaucoma affects actually more than 3 million people in the United States alone. And here now to tell us more information is an ophthalmologist at Montefiore Medical Center and also Visual Sciences, Dr. Gene Kim. And uh, welcome, Dr. Kim. Thanks Good for having me. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Glad. So uh, as we talk about this Glaucoma Awareness Month, uh, a lot of people suffer with it. I know it's something that's run in my family. Sure. Uh, but for those who don't know about glaucoma, how do you actually define it? So glaucoma is a disease that, uh, it's a chronic progressive di disease mm -hmm. that affects the optic nerve, which is the nerve in the back of the eye that's responsible for transmitting vision that's captured by the eye to the brain. So it's a, it's a necessary part of the visual pathway, and any damage that occurs there has the potential to cause vision loss and even ultimately blindness. So uh, as you mentioned, it is one of the leading causes of blindness around the world and uh, here in the United States. Uh, it's estimated to uh, affect around 80 million people worldwide, which is a pretty large number, and as you said, about 3 million here in the U.S., so mm -hmm. something we take very seriously. Um, it's, uh, it is, according to the WHO, it's the second leading cause of blindness, second to cataracts, but unlike cataracts, the blindness that you get from glaucoma is irreversible and permanent, so it's potentially devastating and uh, something that I... I think deserves a month to uh, promote the awareness of. Right. So when people, when you hear people with glaucoma, the question is, how does this arise? How does it come? Well, there's a lot of, you know, there's two different main kinds of glaucoma. I mean, the answer to your question, there's there's different causes, mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes there is no cause. So um, we generally categorize glaucoma as being either open angle glaucoma or angle closure glaucoma. And uh, in angle closure glaucoma, there is kind of a narrowing or even a blockage of the natural drainage, drainage pathway uh, for the eye, which is the way that fluid exits the eye. And, and when there's a blockage there, that leads to a buildup of pressure in the eye, and that can cause damage to the nerve. So in that form of glaucoma, there is an anatomic cause of it. But uh, the more common cause of glaucoma is called opening of glaucoma. And in that cause, there's really no anatomic cause of the glaucoma. Uh, it's just something that the patient has. Uh, and there are risk factors that we look at to kind of stratify whether a patient might be at risk for glaucoma. But at the end of the day, it comes down to uh, just getting a comprehensive eye exam so that we can directly visualize the optic nerve and determine who's at risk for glaucoma. Yeah, you talked about the eye exam. We talk about people who may have some symptoms, right? And sure. you don't know possibly these are actual symptoms until you actually have it diagnosed. But for somebody who's watching right now and say, hey, I want to know what are the symptoms, what should I be watching out for, what sure. do you tell them? Well, also kind of depends on the cause of glaucoma. So as we mentioned with angle closure glaucoma, that can present with symptoms. Sometimes gradually, the symptoms can be quite vague. People will complain of like a headache that kind of comes and goes or something like that. Uh, more rarely than that, it can present acutely with, with severe headache, eye pain, um, you know, blurry vision, halos around lights, even nausea and vomiting. But that is more the exception than the rule. In the majority of people who have open angle glaucoma, which I mentioned is the more common form, most people don't have symptoms at all. So the, the, that's precisely what makes glaucoma so dangerous, is that the majority of people are asymptomatic because even though they may be gradually losing their vision, it happens, it generally affects your peripheral vision first, which uh, you know, is not as important in, in your day-to-day -day life as your central vision. And the vision loss can be quite slow and, and progressive. So uh, precisely what makes it so dangerous is that the majority of people have no symptoms whatsoever. And so that's yeah. why early diagnosis uh, just on routine eye exam is, is so critical. Uh, but are there people, though, who you can say, ah, these people are at a higher risk for glaucoma? Yes, yes, of course. So uh, major risk factors for glaucoma. High eye pressure, which again often doesn't cause symptoms, just something that we find on exam. Family history, there's definitely a genetic or a hereditary component to many forms of glaucoma. So if you have a positive family history, uh, particularly in a first degree relative, like a sibling or a parent or a child who has it, it increases your risk of glaucoma multiple fold. And uh, there's also a, a big component of race or eth ethnicity to glaucoma. So we do know that African Americans, Hispanics are three to four times more likely than Caucasians to develop glaucoma. 
often they'll develop it at an earlier age and, and they can have a more severe form of it as well. They're much more likely, up to 15 times more likely to go blind from glaucoma as well. So those are all things we look at when we're examining a patient to kind of assess the risk level for that patient and, and how to best manage them going right. forward. Sounds a little troubling, but there's some good news in terms of treatment, right? So let's walk through a little bit of the treatment options and what's available for somebody. Sure. So when it comes to glaucoma, once we've examined someone and determined that they do have it or they're at risk for it, uh, there are generally three different groups of treatment options that we have at our disposal. Uh, the first would be medications. And this is really the generally the first line and the mainstay of treatment would be topical medications in the form of eye drops that you would have to administer at home every day. There are a number of different medications that have, that have been out or are, are coming out, and so we can use uh, a variety of them, tailor them to what's best for the patient. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the majority of glaucoma patients are treated with medications first, right. just because they're very safe and, and effective. Um, for some groups of patients, depending on the kind of glaucoma they have, laser treatment is, is also an option, and that's a laser procedure that we do in the office. And, and lastly, the surgery is an option, uh, and that's something that's generally reserved more of as a last, last resort when other treatments have failed, just because of the inherent risk with surgery. But yeah, those are the three main options that we have. Dr. Jean Kim, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us as we talk about Glaucoma Awareness Month and a lot of information given out. Thanks for joining sure. us. Thank you for having me. All right, now listen, for more information, you can visit the website at monofure.org or you can call 718-920-2020. Once again, that number is 718-920-2020. We are taking a quick break, but coming up, we're going to discuss how one organization is coping with substance and alcohol abuse. That's up next when we return.